that's another really, really good point is uh, serial daters with a really high notch count. Um, it's pretty difficult to establish notch count. Um, guys typically lie about theirs. You know, they'll, they'll make it twice as big as what it is. And women usually tend to have it or maybe even cut it by two thirds. But um, you can usually tell by, uh, I mean, Paul, what do you think is a good way, you know, if you can kind of distill it to figure out what a woman's notch count is? Times whatever they say by 35. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, well, what I look for is behaviors. So, you, you know, because it doesn't intrinsically matter. We, we look, all right, we know notch count is an, is an indicator of an inability to pair bond over time. That's what the research shows, right? Yeah. We know that high notch count are treating you're treating people like they're disposable commodities which is a common place for narcissists or bpd people so it correlates we know that about notch count the problem is they're never going to be honest about their notch count particularly during the love bombing phase that jonathan talked about and he illustrated the three phases of a narcissistic abuse relationship so what i look for is behaviors and even when they talk about things in their past or history, things that would indicate inability to pair bonds. So, for example, is she a serial dater who went from boyfriend to boyfriend and was never single? Or a lot of the times you never through... hear about that. But, I mean, if there's a complete absence of any kind of a long-term relationship and it's like, well, you that... know, I lived in Argentina and then I was in Georgia for a bit yeah. and I spent some time in Asia. And it's like, you know, you get a lot of moving around where there's no stability and consistency. Right. Um, they're no usually moving term. around on somebody yeah. else's dime, right? Of course. No long-term. Now, if this is not something that's particularly in the relationship, but they don't have good long-term or long-standing friendships is a pretty good indicator because they burn their bridges with their friends and their family as they kind of go along through life. And so they don't have anybody that they've known for 20 years or 10 years, you know what I mean? Or since they were a teenager that sticks around for very long, that's just on the friendship side. Um, but, you know, I look for one thing that's a really good indicator is if they talk about or had a painful breakup and then took a break from dating for a while, because mm -hmm. what that demonstrates is that they had an ability to pair bond. So they were bonded to this person. They had a painful breakup that hurt them. And so instead of running out and jumping on the carousel, and trying to fulfill their need with their supply need, potentially of a narcissist with all of these other dudes' body parts, they're instead taking a break, right? Because they're hurt by that and they're not sure where to go next. And so they bury themselves and they take four, five, six months of not dating, not being with anybody. And if they volunteer that information, you're not, if you create an environment where, and you should do this during the plate spinning or dating phases, where you create an environment where women are open to talk to you without and feeling free of judgment you know so if you just are able to just kind of create an environment where they don't feel like they're being judged mm -hmm. you know and and that they're being accepted they'll tell you things um and a normal girl will tell you too about things that that where they've made mistakes which i know women don't often the uh, personal accountability is kind of a, a handicap for a lot of women even who are not diagnosable but you know, a good strong indicator of someone's a little bit more self-aware might say some mis talk about mistakes they've made. A narcissist won't do that, especially, a, uh, you know, a covert uh, narcissist is going to be the victim always. Mm -hmm. BPD women, they're usually always the victim. You know, they're not going to say that they did this or that or, you know what I mean? If they d describe, if they mention that they've cheated before, for example, the guy would have deserved it. Mm -hmm. Or... I, I cheated, but you know, I mean, he was abusive to me and what else did you expect me to do? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's going to be all the excuses for their bad behavior and how they're still a good person, even despite their bad behavior. Now mm -hmm. women kind of do that anyway. They need to be the good chimpanzee. I call it, you know, mm -hmm. they need to be seen by the social circles as being a good person. That's an instinctual drive, but they will do it to a level where, you know, there's just no personal accountability at all. That's yeah, there's a, a lot of mental involved. gymnastics that they'll jump through in their head. They'll, like they'll, <laughs> right. they'll jump through a lot of hoops. I mean, basically, whatever number you get, you can multiply it by by essentially two or three.